Hi guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be telling you how you've been doing the pickup systems in your game wrong. Now that might be a bold statement, but bear with me. They're not necessarily wrong, they could just be a little bit better. So let's just take a quick look at what I've got here. I've got a standard 2D platformer layout and I've got some coins. Now when I collide with the coins, they get picked up and my UI updates. Now the way that I'm currently doing it is going to be the way that I'd say a good 90% of you are already doing it and it's perfectly fine as you can see it works but it doesn't really scale well for larger games. Now if you've only got one pickup in this instance, say a coin, then this way would probably be perfectly fine. The way that I'm going to show you is a way that you can actually scale up this pickup system and use it on multiple different items inside your game. But before we get into it, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description. Go give him a follow on Twitter, check out his website, check out all the latest updates for his upcoming game. I'm sure you're going to love it. And I just also want to thank everyone supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. So let's jump over to Visual Studio and see what we have here. Well, the only script that we're currently interested in is my coin script. And this is attached to my coin prefab. Pretty simple stuff. Everybody does this. And what I'm doing, I'm checking for an on-trigger enter 2D. And if the object that collided with a coin has the tag of player, then I'm going to add one to my coins using my coin manager and then destroy the object. Now that's perfectly fine, like I said, this works. But if we were to add a second item into our game, for example, a health portion, we're going to have to replicate all of this code, maybe not the coin manager line, but we're going to have to replicate uh, on trigger enter, check a collision tag, destroy the game object, maybe even spawn in a particle system, anything like that. And then if we were to ever want to change a player's tag from player to actor, for example, then we'd have to go through every one of our items and change player. That's going to take time. It's not the best way of doing it. So let me show you a quick and clean way of doing this. And we're going to do this through inheritance. So... What I'm going to do, I'm going to create a C sharp script and I'm just going to call this pick up item. And we're going to change this up a little bit. So we don't want the start and update. And inside here is going to be where we check whether or not the object that collided with any item is actually the player. So we can simply copy this out of our coin and put it into our pickup system. Now, currently that's going to work but this again is only going to work for coins because inside of our trigger we are only adding one to the coin we want to make this a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more reusable so the way we can do this we can mark a pickup item as an abstract class by adding the abstract keyword into our class declaration and then what we can go ahead and do we can make an empty abstract method which will change dependent on which item we've picked up. So again, we can just call this a public abstract void because we're not returning anything. And we'll just call this pickup. And now because this is an abstract method, we don't actually need a body. So the method declaration is exactly the same, but instead of adding in the curly brackets like you normally would, you just cap that off with a semicolon. And now instead of adding one to the coin manager, we can just go ahead and call the pickup method. So this may look a little strange at first, but basically what's going to happen is we're going to inherit a coin from pickup item, which is going to mean our coin is going to need a pickup method. And whatever we put inside that pickup method in our coin will be called whenever our player collides with that coin. So we go back over. We no longer need uh, on trigger enter in our coin and instead of inheriting from mono behavior we can inherit from pick up item instead and as you can see we get an error and that's because we aren't implementing the pick up method so instead of auto implementing that I'll just go through it manually so I can talk you through everything that we need to do so we need to match the method signature for one so that'll be a public method 
But this time, because pickup is abstract, we need to override it. So this method, method it'll be a public override. Void, again, we need to match that return type. And it's going to be called pickup. And now this is where we can actually do all the actions that we need our coin to perform specifically. So that'll be adding one to our coins using our coin manager. And that's now our system pretty much completed. Every time we create a new item, we can inherit from pickup item, override our pickup method, and then make that collision do whatever we like. So in this instance, we're just picking up that coin. So if I go back over into Unity, we can see that everything is still working as we expect. So we can pick up a coin and we see we get one coin, two, three, four, and then the cluster up to nine. So now it seems like we've just reorganized one script into two scripts. You may not be seeing the benefit of this, but now let me show you how easy it is to add in a new item to be picked up. Now I've already got in my prefabs folder a health portion. Now the health portion itself is just a sprite renderer and an animator. It's got a slight movement to it. But now if we were to add a box collider 2D and make that trigger and then create a new script called health portion. This is where using abstract classes and inheritance is really, really useful. Because now all we need to do is inherit from pick up item and implement that abstract class. And this time, whenever we pick up a health portion, we want to use our health manager to add health to our player. So I've already created a health manager, but you can do this any way that you see fit. So now whenever we pick up a health portion, we're going to add 10 to our player's health, just like we're adding one coin to our player's inventory. And then the last thing that we need to do is attach, like we always would, that health portion script to our health portion prefab. Now if we drag this in a couple of times, we'll just pop a few around here. I thought I'd be fancy and put some kind of parallax effect in on this, but it's just making item placement really awkward. Okay, so now we have three portions in there. If we play the game, we'll see that if we pick up, where are they? So this is our first portion. If we see that we pick this up, we get an extra 10 added on to our health and another and another. And all we needed to do was inherit that health portion script from a pickup item script and the collisions are taken care of for us automatically. And you could extend this to any item in your game. If you wanted a mana portion, you do exactly the same. Just add 10 to mana inside the override of pickup item after you've inherited from pickup item. I hope I've shown you a new way that you can implement into your games, making it a lot easier to implement a pickup system and expand it over the extent of every item in your game. So I think that's about it. I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bites as Unity hints and tips.